OK, so before we get into the other side of your worksheet, there are some things that we need to talk about. OK, so when you're talking about graphs, right, there are two different potential graphs that you might see, and I'm going to move this out of, way, out of the way just for a minute and then we'll go back to it, right? We have two graphs that you might see. The first one is going to be an exothermic graph. And the second one is going to be an endothermic graph. Okay. Now for exothermic, remember when we're talking about exothermic that your delta E or your delta H is going to be negative. Okay, and then when we're talking about endothermic, your delta E is going to be positive. Right, the other way, and let me make this a little bit bigger. The other way to talk about exothermic and endothermic, right? Exothermic, remember, same thing with your cooling curve, is going to release energy. When we talked about endothermic, that means that it is going to absorb energy. Okay, and if you guys remember, we did this thing, right? So if it was endothermic, it was going to be energy plus reactant A plus reactant B that makes AB. And then for the exo, we did a similar thing. We had reactant A plus reactant B that yields AB plus energy. I'm hoping you guys remember that from our first set of thermo notes. Okay. So now what I want to draw your attention to is now you're expected to draw your own graph. Now I'm sure some of you guys are like, I don't know how in particular I'm going to draw this graph. All right, so here's the deal. When we're talking about exothermic, okay, what you need to try and decide is what side of your equation is going to be higher in energy. Okay, so if we are exothermic and we are releasing energy, that means that when we talk about the exo and the negative value, that means that my reactants are going to be at a negative value, which is basically going to mean that my reactants are going to have more energy than my products. So your drawing will look like this, right? Where here are the reactants, here are the products. Okay, so if you're doing these problems and you have a delta E that is negative, then that means you're going to have an exothermic reaction, which means your curve will look like this. All right, let's move on to endothermic. Endothermic, right? Let's think about the energy in the reactants and the products. Your reactants are going to have a lower energy than your products. Remember, we're adding energy to the system in endothermic. So once we add that energy, that means our products are going to be at a higher energy point than our reactants were. So when we're talking about this graph, this one is going to look like this. Reactants, we start, products, higher energy. Okay, so now this is going to be my products. This is going to my, be my reactants. Okay, so my reactants in this one have a lower energy than the products. And that makes sense, right? Because I'm adding energy 
or absorbing energy from the environment, which means that when we make our product, it's going to contain that extra energy. So hopefully that makes sense. When we talk about the one above, right, my reactants have a higher energy than my products. Okay, that should also make sense, right? Because we have the two reactants, A and B, and then they combine and then they release that energy. So at the start, my reactants had that energy. When we make the products, it releases that energy. So it's no longer with A and B. Hopefully that makes sense. Okay, now knowing that, let's do uh, one of these problems. So let's do, let me bring over your worksheet so we can do this. Let's do number four. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna blow this up just a little bit. Hopefully my iPad doesn't decide to do its own thing. So now what you want to do is we are going to take a look at what it is asking us for and what we are starting with. So two things that it's giving us. It is giving us um, delta E and it's telling us that delta E is plus 30. When you guys see a plus, remember positive energy means that it is an endothermic reaction. Okay, so now we know, going back to what we talked about before, that if it is an endothermic reaction, my graph is going to look like this. My reactants are going to have a lower energy level than my products. Now that I know what the graph is going to look like, now I can put in the numbers that it's asking me for. Okay, so let's flip back over. So now I know that my graph is going to look like this. Reactants, low energy. We get to our activated complex and now we're at our products that have a higher energy than our reactants. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, just like I normally do, I'm gonna draw some dotted lines. It'll help me figure out what's going on. Okay, so here is my first dotted line. I'm going to use green and say that this is going to be my reactants. Okay. Now I'm going to add another dotted line. And I haven't even looked at the rest of the numbers yet, y'all. Okay, and that's okay. Because I just want to make sure that my graph looks the way it's supposed to. This is going to be our products. Okay, reactants lower in energy than our products. You always put your reactants at zero. So this line where it starts is going to be zero, always. Even when you're gonna be doing uh, an exothermic diagram, your reactants are always gonna be at zero. Okay, so now let's take a look and see what other information we have. So we also have, it gives us what EA prime is. Okay, so now what you need to do is you need to go back to your worksheet and find out what EA prime is. So if you take a look at your definition, AE prime is going to be your activated complex to your products. Okay, so I am going to write a C up here and I am going to draw a dotted line and this is going to represent my activated complex. Now I'm going to label the diagram just like I would normally label the diagram, right? So A E A E A prime. I don't know why I want to say A E prime. So E A prime is going to be the activated complex to the products. So this arrow right here is going to be E A prime. Now you notice I haven't even done anything else with any of the other values yet because I want to make sure that my graph looks the way it's supposed to. Okay, 
I know that the difference between the products and the reactants is going to be my delta E. So from here, my products to my reactants, that is going to be delta E. Every day, all day. Now the other one that I haven't labeled yet is going to be EA. EA, according to your definition, is going to be the activated complex to the reactant. So I'm going to put that over here. So activated complex to my reactants, that is going to be EA. Okay, so now let's deal with our numbers. Now it says in the problem that our delta E, so take a look at A here. It says our delta E is 30 kilojoules per mole. That means that here, that is delta E, this equals 30 kilojoules per mole, which means that this line up here is going to be at 30, right? Everybody see that? From here to here is 30. That is my delta E, okay? That's why I put that there. Now I'm going to get rid of this. Okay, what is the next piece of information we have? It says that our EA equals 20. So that means that this line from 20, sorry, from 30 up here differs by 20, and it's positive 20. So this top number is going to be 50, right? From here to here, is 20. Okay, just like we said from down here, here to here is 30. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. That is the whole drawing for number four.